Baltimore Southern Police District is the city's largest district, 61,000 residents. And on Tuesday afternoon, sources tell us at one point there were three police officers on patrol. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about a severe Baltimore City police staffing shortage. There are not enough officers to patrol the entire city and they're pleading for help. They're pleading for more officers. They're pleading for guys to do overtime, whatever they can to make up the difference. And it's not really happening the way they want it to happen. Now, this is not just Baltimore City, but it's all over the nation. And there is one particular reason among many, but one chief reason why this is happening. But let me just read you a couple of things here. Then we're going to get to a video. You see this from In Wokeness on Twitter. Shout out to them. Baltimore is now facing apocalyptic levels of policing shortages. Last week, three, not one, not two, but three police officers patrol a whole district of 61,000 residents. Police are now unable to respond to calls, including for child assault. We'll get to that in a minute. The department is now postponing police training in an attempt to solve shortages. So maybe the officer needed for training can't go do training because they need to be on the actual street trying to combat the crime, which is high in a place like Baltimore. Now, shout out to Kim Clasey, who is a resident of the area. She says Baltimore mayor defunded the police by $24 million in 2020. Remember the whole George Floyd defund the police, a cap. Remember all that. And remember when guys like myself and many others said that when you defund the police, all you're going to do is have crime go up as a result. You're not actually going to help those in the community. All that quote unquote defunding police does is help those on the outside feel good about themselves. Like, Hey, I did something right. I did something for the community. Really, you didn't do anything but just make things more dangerous. But anyway, she continues. He tried to refund the police the following year, but by that time, hundreds had already left. And here's one more thing, just for a little bit of icing on the cake. 23 Baltimore schools have zero students proficient in math per state test results. Okay. Now, let's get to the news clip here. If you want to see the clip in full without my commentary, link, as always, will be in the description. If you're on IG, visit the link in the bell. Go to the corresponding article on the website. But without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. About those dire shortages at the department. But tonight, we're getting a much closer look at the real impact those shortages are having here on the streets. In the Southern District on Tuesday, there was a plea for officers to work overtime. Minutes later, it went citywide. Citywide, overtime available on today's day, Charlie Schiff, Southern District. Anyone interested? So the call first went out to just that district. Hey, anybody available? Some overtime? Can we get some help? Then the entire city was alerted. Hey, this is anybody in Baltimore City? available and willing to work in the Southern District for some overtime. Can anyone please help? Baltimore Southern Police District is the city's largest district, 61,000 residents. And on Tuesday afternoon, sources tell us at one point there were three police officers on patrol. Just seconds after the plea for officers hit the airwaves, so did pleas for help. If anyone in Sector 2 can come clear, we have a physical child abuse at Moral Park, and there's a 10-year-old at the location with bruises all over his body. And you know what? See, the thing is, this is what I'm talking about. When you don't have enough police, I said it before, in many of these communities, the police are the last bastion of hope. Without the police, you're just going to have chaos. So when people say defund the police, I just never understood it. It never made any sense to me. Even if I was a liberal person, it wouldn't make sense to me. But I think people who think this makes sense don't come from these kind of areas. They don't understand what goes on. They think they know, but they have no clue. They think the police are the problem. They think it's a, it's a thing called over-policing. There is no such thing as over-policing in the USA. Okay, over-policing is what could happen in China when they had the virus going on and you get welded inside your home. Literally, they, they weld a bar over your door and block you from leaving that's over policing but having enough officers to be able to fight crime and to solve cases that's not called over policing it's just called policing let's continue a 
Okay, we also have a common assault. We have a missing person, 2640B. Orange Street. Ten minutes after that child abuse call was transmitted, it appears there were still no officers en route. We still have one of that physical child abuse. Yes, sir. Stand be advised, we are now holding ten calls. No priority ones. We still have the physical child abuse and the common assault. And it's heartbreaking. Imagine if you are a, a crime victim. Betsy Smith with the National Police Association calls the city's police staffing dangerously low. You are endangering the lives of the police officers that are on duty. And what that further does is endanger the lives of the citizens. There's five. So basically what's happening from my point of view is if you're not about to bleed out, they're not coming to you. You got bruises on your body. Okay. What are we going to do about that? Write a report. But look, we got more important things to worry about. And don't, don't let you be about to die, overdose or something like that. In some places, they don't even really carry Narcan. It's like, look, man, you want to OD, go ahead. That's your business. Let's continue. 522 vacancies. At a city budget hearing last year, the top brass admitted it struggled with recruitment and is hoping to hire civilians to fill in the gaps. Why would you want to be a Baltimore City police officer? Why? In a dangerous place where you know it's understaffed um, and the mayor at one point did not have your back. And this new mayor, they got the young guy. Is he going to have your back? I, I don't really have any confidence in him. I would not have confidence in him if I was an aspiring officer in Baltimore. You really got to love that city and really, um, you, you can't really mind risking your life out there. And a lot of people just don't want to do it. It's not even really worth it. We're looking at upwards to 120 to 140 positions that we're trying to create in this request to be able to sustain going forward. The reason that nine out of every 10 police departments in this country is short staffed is because we have been dealing with here in the United States uh, this three and a half, almost four year vilification and demonization of the American law enforcement officer. That's facts. And, you know, like somebody said on the Twitter thread I showed earlier, that I didn't uh, read. It's about George Floyd. After George Floyd and that whole thing, the whole ACAB and all cops are bad and uh, defunded police, all that thing really took off and it spread like wildfire. And as a result, you got quite a few cities all over the country with shortfalls in their police staffing, which is going to result in more crime, more violence, and overall, less safe place to live. Until perceptions change, Smith predicts recruitment will not improve and the pleas for officers will grow louder. 16 is going to pick up the physical child abuse and it becomes clear of his larceny from all Our sources are telling us tonight that the department is actually postponing training for officers just to keep them on the streets. We're live. Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. I'm Kai Jackson. So there we go. That's what's happening out there in Baltimore City. Now, can anyone truly say, can anyone truly say they're surprised at this? I know I'm not. As I close, I want to say this. Shout out to the officers who are out there and have not left the force. I know all the incentive in the world is there for you to leave. Financial, maybe not because you might not be at retirement age. I'm not really sure about the financial part, but everything else is there. It's like you don't have support from those who, who, who you should have support from. You are working a lot. You're being pressured to do overtime. And if you're not doing overtime, you still don't have enough guys be in the in the streets with you. Like I said, there were three officers for a whole neighborhood of 61,000 people. I mean, it's, it's just a bad situation overall. You're not getting respected on a national level. You're not getting help from your leadership. You don't have enough staff to be out there in the streets with you fighting crime, fighting violence. You just don't have enough. So all the incentive is there for you to go ahead and leave and say, you know what? I'm good. I tried. It's not working out. I'm going to go do something else with myself. So shout out to you guys who were still there hanging on, doing the best you can. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Are you surprised at what happened here in Baltimore with the police staffing shortages? And not just Baltimore, but in many cities like Baltimore all over the country. Are you surprised after the whole George Floyd, all cops are bad, defund the police? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. What can be done to fix this? If you ask me, I would say maybe more money. I'm talking about a big amount of money. 
at least six figures to go out there and be a police officer. But then there could be a problem with that because you may have guys that are overqualified guys that really don't want to be in the streets fighting crime, but guys who want the money, which could result in a higher turnover and you would still kind of be in the same situation. How do you really fix the problem? You got to do something. I think one thing you could do as I close for real would be to have more help from local leadership. Anytime anything happens, you got to have the mayor, uh, city council. Everyone must have your back. They got to have your back. I mean, if it's something crazy, you got caught on camera doing something wild, that's different. But if it's not that serious, if it's not that deep, they got to have your back. They can't throw you under the bus. They need to go above and beyond to keep their current officers and to recruit more. No wokeness, no nonsense. It needs to be a good environment to be. And beyond Baltimore, you got to have the entire uh, image of police get rehabilitated nationwide. You got to have the media be on board, the politicos be on board in D.C. Everyone must be on board to solve this because if you don't fix it, this problem we see right now in Baltimore and other parts of the country will only get worse from here. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace. Thank you.